Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Sabah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. Please turn on and try to answer some ask in obstetrics. Okay. Let us start with the first. What is the maneuver in this picture? And the comment on hand in A and B. Again, what is the maneuver in this picture? And the comment on hand in A and B. I wanna you to try to answer for me. Okay. So what is the maneuver here? And what is the indication for this maneuver? And comment on hand A and B. This maneuver is by manual uterine compression. It is done in cases with a tonic postpartum hemorrhage to do compression to the uterus to stop bleeding. One of the maneuvers done in a tonic primary postpartum hemorrhage. The hands in A, the left hand in the supra pubic region compressing on the fundus of the uterus. While hand B is the right hand in the vagina, in the anterior fornix, so the uterus, the body, and the fundus is compressed between the left hand in the suprapubic or abdominal hand and the vaginal hand in the anterior fornix. So this is by manual compression, as I said. Let us go to the next. What is the presentation and position in A and B? And again, try to answer before me. Presentation and the position in A and B. When you log to the picture, log to where is the denominator. In case of vertex, the denominator is the oxput. Where is the oxput? This is to know the position. Okay, because this is a vertex presentation. Why I said the vertex presentation? Because the lowermost part of the head enter the pelvis or pass through the pelvic rib is the vertex. Okay, so the first part of the question, what is the presentation? Both of them vertex presentation. What is the position? This is the difference between A and B. Okay. Occiput in A is directed to the right and the anterior. So this is right occipital anterior. Why I said right? Because we, we say right and the left according to the right side of the woman. So the right side here of the woman is this side. The left side is here. So the occiput is directed to the right and the anterior. So we call it right occipital anterior. This is as regard A. So the full answer for A, vertex presentation, right occipital anterior. What about B? B also vertex presentation, as I said before. What about the occiput? The occiput is directed posteriorly and to the left. This is the left side, and the oxford directed to the left and the posterior. So, here the position is left occipital posterior. Left occipital posterior. So, to complete the answer for B, we'll say vertex presentation left occipital posterior. Okay? Let us go to the next. Comment on head attitude in A. B, C, and D. Please concentrate very well before answering. Comment on the head attitude in A, B, C, D. Okay. The head attitude here is flexed. And the baby is presented by vertex. So, this is 
the head is flexed and the baby presented by vertical in a what about the head slightly deflexed but but still presented by vertex also and this may happen with occipital posterior occipital transverse and so on so a and b vertex presentation but the fetal head at you this head in a is well flexed but in b slightly deflexed what about C? The head is midway between flexion and the extension. More deflection happens. This midway between flexion and the extension will cause brow presentation. The baby is presented with frontal bone. With this frontal bone. So this is brow presentation. Okay, and the head is midway between flexion and extension. What about picture D? The head is completely extended. So the baby is presenting with face. So this is face presentation. So again, if we are commenting on the fetal head at root, I say in A, the head is well flexed. In B, the head is slightly deflexed. In C, the head is midway between flexion and extension in D I'll say the head is extended okay so this is the best answer for this question okay if I ask you another question what is the presentation I will say for A vertex presentation for B still vertex presentation with slight, with slight mild or mild deflection C, this is a brow presentation, and D, this is face presentation. This is another question. I hope it is clear enough. Go to the next, please. Comment on fetal presentation in A, B, C, and D. Again, comment on fetal presentation in A, B, C, and D. Please try to answer before me. Okay, so in A, the baby is presented by face. So, this is face presentation. Okay. The area of the chin to the suborbital ridge. So, this is face presentation. In picture B, the baby is presented with brow, his frontal pole. So this is brow presentation. Notice the difference. I can't reach the chin here. If I did BB, I can't reach the chin. This is how can you differentiate between face and the brow by BB. Here I can feel the chin because it is face presentation. Here it is brow presentation. Okay. What is the comment on C? This is complete breach presentation. And you should mention it like that. Don't say just breach presentation because breach has different two types. Complete, incomplete, frank breach. Okay. So, or sometimes footling. So this is complete breach presentation because the head is flexed, the knee is flexed, the two legs beside the buttocks is a presenting part, forming the presenting part, so we call it complete breach. Okay, this is complete breach presentation as regard for C. What about lecture D? Picture D is shoulder presentation shoulder presentation as you see here the shoulder is the lowermost part the baby is presented by shoulder of course it is undeliverable as you know okay so patient with shoulder presentation need ovarian section okay 
also prayer is undeliverable. So if I asked you, what is the best mode of delivery in case maybe have a trial if it is meant to adhere or otherwise it will be delivered by cesarean section. In brow presentation, the persistent brow, cesarean section. In case of complete presentation, with adequate pelvis, everything is fine, and you know, congenital anomalies, and you know, contraindication for vaginal delivery, I can proceed for vaginal delivery. If any complication expected, I'll do cesarean section. What about shoulder presentation? Delivery by cesarean section. Okay, let us go to the next. What is the name of the maneuver in this picture? And indication. Okay, we have four maneuvers here. Define the maneuver and mention the indication. Okay, try to answer that for me, please. Okay, so in the first picture, picture A, this is fundal grip. We are trying to palpate the fundus to know which part of the feet is occupying the fundus of the uterus. Is it the buttock or head? Here, the buttock occupying the fundus of the uterus. Means that the baby is presented by the phallic presentation or phallic presentation because the buttock is high up in the fundus. So, what is the indication to do fundal grab? Is to know which part of the fetus occupying the fundus. In figure B, this is para umbilical grab. Okay. This is the first answer, the answer of the first part of the question. What is the indication to detect where the fetal back? Is it anterior or posterior to the right or to the left or direct anterior or posterior? So, I'm doing para umbilical grip to know where the back. In this case, the back is directed anteriorly and to the left side. As I mentioned before, the left and the right is the left side of the mother. So this is the left side of the mother, the back is directly anterior, so this is called left posterior to anterior. The back is anterior and to the left. So I can feel the convexity of the back while I'm doing para umbilical grip. Okay, what about figure C? This maneuver is called first pelvic grip. We try here to palpate the part of the fetus occupying the lower reclined segment. Is it head or buttock or empty in case of transversal line? If it is head, this is phallic presentation. If it is empty, it would be transverse lie or, sh or shoulder presentation. If it is buttock, this is breach presentation. Here in this picture, the presenting part here is cephalic presentation or cephalic presentation. Okay? So the aim to do first pelvic grip is to define which part of the fetus in the lower uterine segment. With its characteristic, the head is rounded, the head is rounded, hard, palatable, tender, to differentiate it from the buttocks, which usually is irregular, soft, non-palatable, and non -palatable. Okay. Another aim for the first pelvic grip to feel which, how many fifths of the head palpated above the symphysis pubis to know if there is engagement or not, according to the rule of fifths, if two fifths of the head is palpated above the symphysis pubis or less, the head is considered engaged. If more than two fifths is palpated, so the head is not engaged. Okay, let us go to figure D. What is the maneuver here? This is called second pelvic grab. 
what is the aim of second pelvic grip to know the fetal head attitude is it the head is well flexed deflexed or extended how should i know by palpating the sense foot by one hand and the other hand feel the upper if sense foot is higher the head is flexed if both of them at the same level it is deflexed if the sense foot below or lower than the occiput so the occiput is higher the head is extended okay so this is the aim of second pelvic grip to know the fetal head attitude either flexed deflexed or extended this is the four maneuvers in the picture and this is the indication of each one Let us go to the next. What is the procedure in this picture? And dimension one indication. Okay. As you look here, this is the uterus, and this is an intrauterine balloon, hister, inflated. And this. So the procedure here is intrauterine balloon, hister. What is the indication? Cases with, for example, with postpartum hemorrhage. One of the methods to control bleeding is to use intrauterine balloon, like Bakri balloon. Okay, so it is used in case of primary postpartum hemorrhage to control the bleeding. Intrauterine balloon test. Okay, this is the last one. I want to tell you about my box, which becomes six books published on Amazon right now. Textbook of obstetric, textbook of gynecology, contraception handbook, multiple choice question book, medical disorder in pregnancy book, and the newcomer just yesterday published on Amazon, gynecologic oncology. It is very important book. I hope you can find it easily on Amazon through this link here. This is my link as an author on Amazon. You can find my recent book, which is the Anthropological Oncology book, and all other books. And you can find the sample also there to have a look. Okay. The other links here: one for my YouTube channel, and the other for blogspot.com. I write and recommend a link for my site on Amazon and my site on YouTube. Thank you, everybody. If you wanna ask me any question, just write and comment. And my best wishes for all of you.